Welcome to Grace Lutheran's Worship Service, the second Sunday of Christmas. As we settle in for worship, release and center our thoughts and love towards Jesus. Welcome to worship. Let us begin by confessing our sins and receiving the promise of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lonely and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people, with all who come to the manger. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we will hear from Kelly for the children's message. Good morning. Welcome to the children's message for today. I hope that you guys have all had a peaceful and restful Christmas. Um, of course, we start back to school tomorrow, and we just pray that all the kids will be back in person um, as soon as possible, as soon as safely possible. So the gospel reading for today is John 1, 10 to 18, but I'm actually going to read a few verses that are a little bit before that. So in John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And in verse 9, The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And who do you think that light was? Say it with me. Of course, Jesus. But what do we do with this light? I mean, we talk about this light all the time, but what do we do with it? Well, you guys all know the song, Let Your Little Light Shine, right? And what are we supposed to do with our lights? We do not hide our lights. We do not let people blow it out. 
we let our little light shine, right? And the thing is, is that I think kids do that the best. You guys let your light shine the best of anyone. It just seems like we all have stories of when we were kids or kids that we know saying those things that, that just enlighten us all, that just give us all light. So thank you for always shining your guys' light and keep it up because that's what we are meant to do. And you are the best at it. Now, one of the parents commented to me a few weeks ago about how amazingly resilient she thinks the kids are during this, this really tough time. It's been a really tough year, right? And she was saying how it's just incredible how resilient and how, how much joy kids are still able to find in all of this. And we can learn so much from them. And I could not agree no more. Even though this year has been really hard, I feel like the kids have led the way in being resilient and finding ways to still have joy. So that's another way that you guys have let your light shine and keep letting it shine. Now I want to read the last couple pages from the book that I read on Christmas Eve because I think, I think it's really important because Christmas is over now. And now what do we do? We gotta keep our little light shining, right? So the last couple pages of the book go like this. It's the songs that you sing. It's the light that you bring. It's your heartfelt compassion and your hope put in action. It's your thrill for the little things. It's your love for what's true. It's the good that you do. You're a part of the story the joy and the glory. Yes, Christmas is you. And that's what we talk, what we mean when we're talking about the light that has come into the world and the darkness will not overcome it. And we are to always let our light shine. The light of Jesus through us, we let it shine and keep up the good work. The first reading for the second Sunday of Christmas is written in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. Here begins the reading. God promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. In Zion, Israel will rejoice over God's gifts of food and livestock. Young women will express their joy in dancing. God will give gladness instead of sorrow. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts of the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the furthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from, his, from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the heights of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall marry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Here ends the first reading. The second reading for the second Sunday of Christmas is written in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. Here begins the reading. In Jesus 
all of God's plans and purposes have been made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have been chosen as God's children and have been promised eternal salvation. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption and his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the, real, with the seal of promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to praise of his glory. Here ends the second reading. The psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 147, verse 12 through 20. Here begins our reading. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to earth. His words run swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his world word and melts them. He makes wind blow and waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statuses and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord! The Gospel of John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What is coming to being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will, or of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, 
He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. What John has to say is very, very profound because it talks about a God who has always been, who was, and yet who comes into being. There's a lot of things about God that we can reflect on. I'd like to share with you a reflection on God that our four-year-old son had to say. Quote, I bet God had a lot of work when he made me. But God, God didn't make him. Nobody did. Because nobody else was there. I am sure he didn't know it. He was age four. But that was pretty profound. What has happened since that time is pretty good. He was... Uh, a state champion cross-country ski racer three years in a row. He also uh, was um, busy doing uh, a number of other things. In fact, one of those, uh, after attending the University of Vermont, he came, Vermont, he came here and at the Basel Open, uh, he took second place one year. And then the next year, uh, his picture was on the poster. I've told this story to many people here in town. Uh, in part because I'm proud, in part it's kind of a neat coincidence. But what has happened since is that he has become a physician, he is an emergency room doctor, and he is uh, enjoying life very, very much. But nobody else was there when God came into being. God created. There is a wonderful hymn that we're going to sing after, after this sermon. And it's a hymn that reflects what John the Evangelist is saying. Of the Father's love begotten is the name of the hymn. It's very, very old and most likely was sung in the time when people didn't have instruments other than maybe harps. But of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending he, of the things that are, that have been, and that future years shall see, evermore and evermore. O oh, that birth forever blessed, when the Virgin full of grace, by the Holy Ghost conceiving, for the Savior of our race, and the babe, the world's Redeemer, first revealed his sacred face, evermore and evermore. Let the heights of heaven adore him, angel hosts his praises sing, powers, dominions bow before him, and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent, every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father, and O Holy Ghost to thee, him enchant with high thanksgiving, and unwearied praises be, honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore and evermore. Again, this is one of the most ancient hymns of the church, and much of what we sing here had its origins, actually, especially around Christmas time, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and others. 
uh, are dated back to probably some of them uh, into the second century. And so we have a long history, a history of a God who makes himself known in different ways, sometimes profound ways, sometimes in simple ways, but almost always in kind and caring ways. We have a God who comes to us, not from the past, however, but this God comes to us from the future. And in coming to us, makes our lives whole again. And it puts a claim on us and gives to all the nations of the world possibility. Possibility if we follow. But God is there, understanding, caring, creating, continuing still to bless us. We cannot say that uh, we, we believe um, that, that we, we do not have um, difficulties. We have a lot of difficulties understanding God, understanding life. And if God made life, then perhaps we had best be careful on how we handle it and hope that uh, we are participating in the continuing of creation and the renewal of God. Now this, uh, in Christmas here, and our second Sunday, we are, we are looking forward uh, to Epiphany at the end of this week. The word Epiphany means the bringing of light into the world. Uh, January 6th is the 12th day of Christmas. You've heard of the 12 days of Christmas. And uh, on that day, after that day, we have the new day called Epiphany. Light being brought into the world. Light that will be eternal. Light that will never fade. Light that we can trust and bring our problems and our situations to get a clear answer. But most of all, will get acceptance by one who loves us. Almighty God, and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, He's Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending, he of the things that are that have been and that future years shall see evermore and evermore. Oh, that birth forever blessed. When the virgin full of grace by the Holy Ghost conceived thee, born the Savior of our race, and the babes the world's redeemer first revealed his sacred face. Evermore and Let the heights of heaven adore him, angel hosts his praises sing, pause dominions fall before him, and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent, every in concert ring evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father and the Holy Ghost to thee him enchant with high thanksgiving and 
and unwearied praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore and evermore. Amen. Joining our voices with Song of the Angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of hope and redemption, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with your goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold this earth in delicate balance, from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. We pray for Ben, Chris, and all active service members and all veterans who may continue to suffer the wounds of conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. We pray for Terry, Lucille, Bob, Kevin, Darlene, Larry, Jody, Joyce, Tracy, Pearl, Dave, Deb, Shirley, all affected by COVID-19, and those dear to our hearts in need of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Today we especially remember Judy and Harold. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will go as spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ, committed to change the world by God's grace through worship, education, mission, and ministry. Thank you for joining us in worship from Grace Lutheran Church. If you have any prayer concerns or comments, feel free to call the church office at 320-679-1062 or email church at gracechurchmora.org. Have a blessed week.